Our next talk will be given by Joe Lopez from the Nova Southeastern University. The title of the talk is Recent Progress from the Global Invertebrates Genome Alliance. Giga. Thanks, Gene, and uh, uh, glad to be here. Thanks uh, to Harris and uh, all the EBP organizers. Um, just want to give a, a current update of where we are with uh, the Global Invertebrate Genome Alliance. Um, happy to uh, uh, just kind of follow up on a, a recent meeting we just had in uh, Curacao, and uh, this was our third meeting, and uh, it was a, a place right adjacent to coral reefs. This picture here of uh, Dendrogyra, uh, it's a coral uh, from Florida. It's kind of uh, epitomizes where uh, a lot of reef biology is. It's in a state of uh, degradation, and this is why our group is kind of focused on uh, marine invertebrate uh, conservation and genomics. And uh, uh, this is a, uh, a, a coral that's diseased in Florida. Uh, in Curacao, it was quite healthy. And uh, coral reefs are uh, one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. It was great to hear that, that kind of focus by Harris that uh, uh, to focus uh, on an ecosystem level. And here we can capture a lot of biodiversity uh, that way. So just briefly um, about GIGA, we're, we're not as cohesive as some of these other groups. Uh, part of that is because we're, we're a very, uh, we cover a lot of uh, phyletic diversity. Um, and so we are, we also started uh, later than the, uh, the G10K, which we get a lot of inspiration from, the Vertebrate Genome Project. Um, I think part of our uh, mission here is we're going to learn a lot. And uh, it was great to hear that this is a type of moonshot. And we're going we're gonna to learn as we go along. We're going to develop these techniques. I think in many ways we're, we're going to be waiting on the technology to, to develop, especially as we heard uh, um, you know, we have unique problems in the invertebrates in terms of small biomass uh, and, uh, and biomaterial. So uh, we just won't have that, that luxury of uh, having a lot of, of DNA to, to work with. So we're going to have to wait for long reads, uh, sequencing technology, single cell genomics, et cetera. And uh, I think that's going to help us uh, move forward. But uh, basically, these are, these are our goals. Again, uh, we want to bring together a community of scientists. At this point, we are a, 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 a grassroots organization, and uh, we are uh, we're trying to develop these standards. We'll follow along with uh, what standards are developed through EGP. And uh, one of the focus, foci of GIGA has been, uh, at least the past few years since our, our brief inception, is to train. Uh, you know, we, we are right now have a lot of data, as we are. I was trying to insert one other slide here, but uh, you know, this, this third point here is we have a lot of data, but we need people to actually interpret that data and, and, and understand it. And uh, so that's going to be, that's been one of our missions in GIGA is, and at our last meeting is, uh, which was really happy to see, uh, a large number of students here in Curacao. This is our second meeting, uh, which was held in Munich uh, three years ago. Uh, I mean, and uh, three years ago in Munich, and then lastly, we just had the GIGA meeting in Curacao, again, adjacent to a very, uh, a very important ecosystem. Uh, this was published, this, this flowchart just shows uh, some of the things that GIGA can do or what we want to do. Uh, part of this organization is to, again, train, uh, develop the, the, the questions uh, for a broad group of, of species or uh, of animals, and um, we will help in what other regards are needed to, uh, to facilitate the goals of EGP. Um, and um, again, we were very heartened to, to support student training in bioinformatics genomics. Uh, this was uh, last year's first meeting at the Smithsonian, and uh, through the AGA, we were able to, to host this workshop on, uh, on Galaxy at the time. Um, at, uh, in Curacao, we had uh, a day and a half of training sessions on assembly and annotation. This was sponsored by the National Science Foundation and the AGA. And um, uh, we also talked about incorporating possibly as a nonprofit group and as a society. I think this will help us organize fundraising uh, and dovetail with EGP. Uh, so this, this is moving forward with, with our network. Uh, just to emphasize where we are on this, this animal tree, 
and what the invertebrates, which is a artificial group really, uh, but uh, the spineless organisms uh, represent the majority of this tree. Um, we, we know we have a, a, a really biased focus on uh, the chordates, the arthropods, that's where the representation of most of the genome sequences are now. But uh, we have 30 or so other phyla here on this tree. Uh, some of them um, have no molecular representation at all. Very f no, none, uh, the majority of those have no genome uh, representation. Uh, some of them have only one species, but uh, that just shows how, how rare and, and difficult and inaccessible they are and the work that's needed in terms of sampling. Um, I had one other tree here I didn't get to insert uh, from Casey and Dunn, but that also highlights uh, what we need to do. Um, as I mentioned, you know, Xenoturbulata, uh, Micronathozoa, one species uh, in the whole phyla. And yet we have a wide diversity of morphotypes, behavior, uh, vertebrates or invertebrates feed the planet uh, with fisheries and uh, crustacea. Uh, interesting morphologies, uh, the octopus, uh, the cephalopods have uh, very developed neuro neuronal systems. There's a, there's a genome there from the octopus that's recently been sequenced. We can learn a lot more from the cephalopods as well. These are non-model organisms. Again, uh, uh, Kevin's going to talk about the, uh, 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 the insects, so I won't talk about those. We could leave those out. The nematodes, there's been quite a representation, but leaving those out, we still have hundreds of thousands of invertebrates that could be sequenced and, and analyzed. And um, this is the genome size uh, database, and you know, we're comfortably in this uh, three gigabase region, uh, but there are a few groups of, of crustaceans that have very large genomes. So those are gonna be hurdles that we have to go, go through as well, uh, fairly large genomes. So we wanna work with these quality standards that are gonna be developed. Um, uh, right now, in terms of species statistics, we have probably about 200 or so um, invertebrate genomes, not counting the, the arthropods that have been sequenced. We're tallying those up right now, um, and uh, we're moving forward. But again, as a group, it's been type of piecemeal in terms of uh, where we are. So uh, this past summer, uh, the European group IGNITE uh, was able to obtain funding to uh, start a program for 15 PhD students, and uh, that's, again, part of the deliverable of training. This has been moving forward. Some new publications on uh, uh, invertebrate placozoan species. A whole genome was, was sequenced, and this actually added another species to the, to the file of placozoa. Uh, so that, that uh, grew from this genome uh, initiative. We have a collection of, uh, of, C of publications uh, run through PLOS. Uh, we're asking for people who want to uh, uh, deposit into this collection, and that's, that's moving forward as well. Um, new paper that's coming out in annual review of uh, animal biosciences gives this other tally of where we are for invertebrates. And um, again, it shows uh, just um, the long way we have to go and the many gaps that are involved. Again, only about 200 or so invertebrate genomes uh, in the current list of, of animals. Uh, we have one partner in the uh, Harbor Center for Genome Sciences, though. Uh, they gave a talk in Curacao and uh, have shown some really nice progress uh, with looking at those invisible fauna, the Maya fauna, which are found in interstitial spaces of uh, reefs and marine uh, sediments. And um, they give some very promising results that they, they presented here. Oh, I didn't get to include that. This is not the, the latest version. But uh, they have now added about uh, 30... Uh, remember about 30 uh, annelid species and uh, close to 50 Nemertian uh, genomes uh, in their, their sequencing efforts. And this is a great, great boost to uh, invertebrate genomics. So uh, they're moving forward. And, uh, and then again, we have lots of other groups that we want to pull in uh, uh, and coordinate so that basically we avoid duplication. We have a limited number of resources and um, and uh, this is kind of where we want to go. Thank you. Questions? Eric. So, so how many of these are being done to, uh, you know, the reference quality of the setting of the UPG project? And meaning uh, long reads and some kind of scaffolding on top of that? 
Uh, well, the Hubbard's using uh, uh, mostly Illumina sequencing for a lot of theirs, uh, their, their sequences. And part of it, part of the problem is the amount of material. Uh, but I think you bring up some good points that I think we, we set these standards for uh, reference quality and, uh, and longer reads. So I think that's something we, we want to aspire to. Just to comment on that, I mean, the, the meeting in Curacao is very clear that most of these don't, genomes are being generated, and there were hundreds of genomes presented in Curacao, which is encouraging, are being generated for specific, um, usually ecological or environmental assessments of people. People really moving towards looking at population genomes to understand adaptation and also climate change. And so they're all moving towards going somewhere with assembled genomes, because that's the only way you can do that <coughs> population genomics. So, so I think the, the, the push is getting get, definitely towards um, highly configured genomes. Again, as I was pointing out, these genomes range from the beautifully small 50, gigabase, uh, 50 megabases up to the stupidly big. And so the beautifully small ones, that's going to be much more easy to achieve for. Mark was great. It's 10 to the negative.